question about the Juki uh, TL2010Q and talking about top stitching and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do in my demo right now is I'm going to try and replicate uh, I th what I would consider kind of um, a typical application for, for wanting to top stitch. Now specifically what I was asked about was whether um, with, with getting nice top stitching, getting something, uh, the thread that's heavier. So what I'm using is a Tex 69, which is something that is very readily available. It's a heavy, um, this one is a uh, bonded nylon and it's a Tex 69. So what I'm going to use um, for my little demonstration is I have a piece of cork here. So this is going to be um, at least the thickness, um, heaviness of something that you guys would want to use, um, whether it would be upholstery weight, fabric, uh, maybe vinyl, uh, lightweight leather, that kind of thing. Then I'm going to use this as my um, liner, my lining for, say where I'm doing a bag, this is my outside, this is my lining. Um, and I have a piece of foam here as well. So. Uh, something that would be very typical, um, I'm just going to use snowdrop for example. If I was going to do the outside of a snowdrop and I'm doing it in cork and I have my lining and I would have a piece of foam in here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a seam, I'm going to sew a seam first then I'm going to fold that out like you normally would if you were going to top stitch the edge of the bag. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So okay, now I'm at my machine and again I have my uh, cork, what I would have is my lining and my foam. So I'm going to line all that up and I'm just really simply going to just do a seam here. What I have as far as um, in my machine, um, on the top I have the Tex 69 on the bottom in my bobbin, um, what I uh, regularly assemble with is a Tex 30. So that's what I have in the bottom right now. Um, it's fine in, for demos. It doesn't really matter what I sew with. I'm just going to show you how it works. So I'm simply going to do um, a seam down here. I'm going to do a 3 8 inch seam. I do have my walking foot on. For top stitching, I always like to use my walking foot. Okay, so that's that. So now what I'm going to do is, um, if I had, oh, I'll get my better scissors here. So I'm just going to trim this off. This is this is how I uh, typically do my bags. Um, with your sewing machines, a lot of times you'll want to use a, a zigzag stitch, or your instructions will say to zigzag the edge um, if you're using foam, because it flattens out the seam allowance and doesn't make it so so thick. What I do, because the jukies are straight stitch only, is um, I do my seam and then I just trim it away really, really close. So now I'm going to fold this over. I'm just going to give it a quick press. I won't show that, but I'll just let the <laughs> camera run while I'm doing this. Just going to give this a quick press. Okay, so now I've just flipped this over. So this would be the lining of my bag, and this is the outside, and I still have the foam in between. I'm going to lengthen my stitch. I'm going to go up to a four, and I'm going to use my walking foot for to all my top stitching, and I'll show you how nice of a job it does. And 
and there you have it. So it just does an absolutely beautiful job of top stitching. Yeah, on the back I've got uh, my Tex 30, so and it's just black. So I wanted this so that there was a good contrasting stitch there. So um, what else can I show you? Um, I guess if there was straps or something in here, then you'd want to know how does it go over top of that. So let me just um, grab something here and I'll show you that as well. Okay, so I'm going to kind of give you the full meal deal here, um, or try to. So I'm, I have some leather here. I'm going to show you how to do this uh, or, or how it goes through leather. And then I'm going to show you on that piece that I just had how if you were going to top stitch um, and then have to go up over a strap and back, over, back down, um, how it would handle it. So here I have one single piece of leather. This is fairly heavy leather. It's not, uh, it is cowhide. It's not like I'm using lamb skin or goat skin or something that's very, very soft. Um, it is a little bit more substantial. It's something I like to use for straps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, okay, I'm going to lay this one over top as well. And I've got it folded. So what's going to happen is the first part here, I'm going to be going over two layers. And then I'm going to jump up and go over three layers. So again, this is very specific to, sec, uh, to Tex 69. Um, what I'm trying to demo is whether the 69 is too heavy weight of a thread for this machine or not. It isn't, but you do have to be careful about how much thickness you can go through. I know that with my Tex 30, I can easily go through five layers of this leather, but with the heavier thread, of course, it's harder for the needle to go in. I am using a 116 uh, top stitch needle, specifically top stitch, because the, the eye, the hole in it is a lot larger. So especially if you're going to be using heavier threads, you do have to jump up um, to a top stitch needle. So. So this is, um, I'm just going to, again, just show you how this works. Get all my stuff together here. And here we go. I do not rush things. I just let the machine work. Okay, and we're going to go up to three. So there is the top stitching. Right up to here is this is two layers and this is three layers. I know from just some other stuff that I was doing here that four layers is just a little bit too much for it. Um, it does want to skip stitches. So uh, of course the back you can't see because I've got black thread but um, and you could put this in the bobbin as well. There wouldn't be any problem with that. So, um, so there. Um, that's that part of it. Now I'm just going to, well, I'm going to just top stitch this other side too. So there. So it does a beautiful job of top stitching both sides. Now I'm just going to set up and I'm going to go over that seam with this in there as well. I'm just going to show this to you and, and I'm going to end up taking it out. Um, I have done um, three layers of leather for the what I'm simulating as my strap and then I just went and sewed over top of it. Now it did skip one stitch right here. Um, it went along through all that thickness, skipped one stitch but then kept going with the rest of it. I'm going to take this out um, and I'm going to use the other end, which only has two layers. This is too thick. Um, I'm just going to be honest with you. This, this machine is not an industrial machine. It will not replace an industrial machine. Um, what I'm asking of it right now, even with using a Tech 69 and trying to go through all of those layers, that is a lot. That's a lot for any machine until you get to um, an industrial. 
So I'm going to take this out. I know if it skipped one stitch here, when I flip this over and try and top stitch all the way through all of this, I'm not going to get through it. Um, I know that right now, but um, so far I'm pretty impressed with what it has done. So I'm going to use this side. This is just the, the double thickness instead of the triple thickness. So um, that's what I'm going, I'm just going to take these stitches out. Okay, so I have um, two thicknesses of leather here. And again, this is cowhide, it's fairly thick leather. Um, I would say it's probably somewhere around a three ounce, uh, if that helps. I don't, I'm not uh, super familiar with my leathers yet. So um, that's what I think this is. So again, um, I've got my, uh, my lining, my foam, and of course you have the seam allowance in there too. So you've got actually two layers of lining, two layers of interfacing, still one layer of foam, and then you're going to have two layers of your outside fabric, as well as we're going to go up over two layers of uh, whatever you're going to be using for your strap. In this case, it's leather. So uh, once again, I'm going to lengthen my stitch to four. And away we go. And again, I'm really going to slow down when I'm going over uh, my strap because I really want to just let the machine do its thing. Okay, there's our answer. Um, I'm going to go over it again, just right to the side here, and see if I go slower, if that will make a difference. So I'm still going over all of those layers. And I can see that one pulled out. Oh, <laughs> this one has the, the foot pedal um, that cuts your thread and yeah, it's getting, a little, I'm a little touchy on it. So um, it did start to um, pull out there or, or it skips stitches. So again, I'm asking an awful lot of this machine, um, to be honest, and I'm not just defending it. Um, going, this would be like another two layers of leather um, when you're going through your cork, it is fairly dense. So there's a lot of layers in here. Um, a lot of it does have to do with the thickness of the thread. Um, I'm going to just switch over, <clears throat> excuse me, to a Tex 30 and see what happens with that. Again, now I've switched my top thread um, over to a Tex 30, so it's a finer thread. We'll just see what happens. Everything else has remained the same. I still have text 30 in the bottom and I'm still at stitch length um, of four. Yeah, and you know what? At my text 30, I still have top stitching. It's not quite as thick and nice. Um, but it just absolutely, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect through there. Not a skip stitch at all. So, um, you know, you have to play around with it a little bit, but is it capable of using heavier thread? Yes, it is. Um, are you going to get op optimal results? Um, it depends on what you're sewing through, what you're asking it to do. So, um, so this is, yeah, I mean, this is a fair assessment. Um, I knew that this is a very heavy thread. For this machine, it really a Tech 69 is is probably more for industrial machines. But is it safe to put it through your machine? Sure, it is. Um, it'll sew through it. Um, it. I mean, it does a beautiful job here. If this had been fabric um, or something lighter weight, it probably would have gone through it with no problem. So I hope that helps you. Um, I hope that uh, gives you some indication. 
Um, the only other thing that I have here is, um, and I have it set up and I haven't tried it. So um, bear with me here. I have an NCW, an old one somewhere, um, that I have used as just kind of, um, it's like my little prototype when I need to um, figure something out, um, it's here. So I had um, riveted the sides because my machine would not go through them. So here I have this one. I actually took the rivet out. It was way back when I didn't have a rivet press and I was just setting it with my little hand tool. So it was all askew anyway. So this is just kind of one that I, that I play around with. So what I'm gonna do is, it seems to be kind of the, the bane of everybody's existence is um, whether their sewing machine can get through the side, the last step in the NCW. So let's just see if this will do it. So of course, it's a matter of folding your NCW around here. Just gonna lift this up, get this underneath here. I have to go the other way. And this is a big reason why I don't like to sew these. So much easier with rivets. My fabric got pretty uh, munched up here when I was um, getting that rivet out. Now my needle's a little... There we go. So there we go. Okay, now I've got it in. Let's see if we can do this. Yep. It did a beautiful job. So, um, yeah, all the way through. Oh, and I've got black thread on the back, so... Um, that doesn't look really beautiful, but um, but it did it did manage to sew through that. So uh, if that gives you any in indication either um, of what it will go through, it does. So again, um, I hope that gives you an idea of uh, what this machine is capable of, and and whether it's a good fit for you. Um, if you have uh, any questions about it, you can certainly contact me directly. If you are in Canada, I do have, um, uh, I am working with Juki Distributors, or a, Ju a Juki Distributor. I'm just going to back up so you can see that machine, see how pretty it is. Um, it is a small machine. It's actually quite, quite surprising how um, small it is. I just pictured it as being very, very large. <laughs> and um, This little thing comes off. The, the quilting um, table and it is it's not an open arm machine it still is a flatbed machine so it does not have the option of being able to you know pull out the little toolbox thing and have the open arm so straight stitch only it just does everything really really well so um, hopefully uh, that answers a couple more questions again if you have any questions let me know um, if you contact me, go through me, use my, um, my coupon code that I'll give you, then um, the distributor will give you a $50 uh, bonus um, little kit with extra needles and bobbins and whatever else they're throwing in at the time. So um, very helpful. Those little bobbins are $250 a piece. So they throw in some extra ones and stuff for you. And again, you can contact me directly. You can just message me or you can um, email me at Debbie. Now remember that's D-E-B-B-Y. So it's Debbie at dodebug.ca. So D-E-B-B-Y at D-O-O-D-A-B-U-G dot C-A. So anyway, um, hopefully you liked this demonstration. I will be doing some more um, as I go along. Um, so you can, whether you look forward to it or not, I'm not sure, but uh, I will be doing some more stuff.